Now in this session we talk about the direct synthesis method. Now as I mentioned the direct synthesis method is one of the simple way to design controller. Now to design controller we mean two things one is to define the structure of the controller the second is to get the tuning parameters. Now let's take the example of a simple tank process where the control objective is to maintain the level and that's done by manipulating the inlet flow. So the output is the level and input is the inlet flow. And for this process let's think about how we want to design the controller. One way to look at this issue is that we want the output to move in a certain way when we make a change in the set point. Now if we change the set point, we can design a controller to get the output to move, suppose initially it was here, either slowly like this, or you want it to be fast, or for some process, maybe there may be some oscillation, but the process can be settled at a faster rate. Now, depending on the process, you can define what you want to achieve regarding the output to follow its set point or the track its set point. Now, this is the fundamental consideration in designing controller using the direct synthesis method meaning that in this particular case we are really defining what we want now mathematically it's equivalent to say that we want a particular form of the closed loop transfer function meaning that we want the output to move in a certain way when there is a change in the set point okay now we know the relation between this ys and rs in terms of the controller and the process so this is the simple feedback diagram for the process now if we look at the relation we have defined it that ys over rs is simply gpgc so the all the transfer function between the two signals that goes the numerator and one plus all the transfer function in the loop so now if you define this so if you define the ys over rs in a particular way so in that case this left hand side of the equation is known also for the direct synthesis method we need gp meaning that gp should be known meaning that an explicit process model is available now if you look at this equation now if we know ys over rs if you know gp then the only unknown in this equation is gc and if you just reformulate the equation you can get gc to be 1 over gp ys over rs 1 minus ys over rs the simple mathematical manipulation will lead to this now this is valid for process model of any order and ys of rs of any form okay. now let's take a look for a particular case say suppose case one you have if the process is simply a first order k over tau s plus one and if you want the output 
also to respond in a first order fashion. Now definitely when we are making a change the set point, you want the output to follow the set point. In that case, this KCL should be 1. Okay. So your desired closed loop response is 1 over tau CL S plus 1. Now this tau CL, that's the closed loop time constant. And that will determine how fast you want your process to be moved. And tau CL is a user defined parameter. Now let's see for this case if you have the process to be first order and your desired closed loop response also to be first order, what should be the controller? Now if you simply plug in this value in this equation, we'll have 1 over GP is given as say, tau s plus 1 over k. So it simply inverts and you will have ys over rs to be 1 over tau cls plus 1 and 1 minus again 1 over tau cls plus 1. Now if we simplify this term, you will end up getting this gc to be tau s plus 1 over k and just simply do a simple manipulation, you will end up getting this to be 1 over tau cl s. Now I want to compare this with our standard PID controller. So this is my controller. I got the expression for the controller. Now I need to know what are the parameters kc, tau y and tau d. So in the ideal form, of a PID controller, GC is KC 1 plus 1 over tau I S plus tau D S. You know, this is the proportional term, this is the integral term, this is the derivative term. Now I need to compare this with this. Now to do that, I will write this to be So this is the ideal form of the PID controller, okay. So just for this case, simply write it as GC ideal here. Yeah. So GC, if I reformulate this equation to simply express it in this way, I will write it in two forms, this tau s over k times 1 over tau CLS plus other term 1 over K 1 over tau CLS. Now this S S gets cancelled out. For this term I will have 1 over K tau over tau CL plus 1 over k tau CLS. Now if I take this term to be out to express it in this standard form, so 1 over k tau over tau CL 1 plus 1 over we have this term was extra in the numerator, so it goes the denominator and there is an S so we have this expression for GC. Now if I compare this with this form, we get KC equals 1 over K tau over tau CL 
we get tau y to be again this is the term here and this is the term there tau and tau d to be zero now this is my final estimate of the parameters okay so if we have a first order process and if your desired closed loop response also first order you will get a control like this now we have tau d times to be zero meaning that this will be a pi controller in generic term we will call the proportional the pi or pid all to be pid controller but some terms may be zero so for pi controller we'll again call it a pid controller with the derivative term to be zero so this this method what it gives it gives the structure of the controller meaning that if we have a first order process and the desired closed loop response of the first order we need a pi controller with the kc parameter this one over k tau over tau cl where tau cl is the user defined parameter and this tau i should be equal to tau meaning that the integral time equals the process time constant and tau d equals zero.